Hello, and welcome to part 7 of a series where I'm building a protogen head. In this part, I'll be laying out the PCB for the prototype schematic that was designed in the last part. This is going to be nowhere near the final product, but it's a good step to validate that I'm using KeyCAD correctly. This was recorded at the same time as the last part, so it has the same casuality and audio quality issues. Sorry. I probably can do this. Oh, look at that. This is this is nice. If I can make that work, that's going to be super nice. I just need to visualize how that would work. So again, I don't have a camera set up up here, so we're just going to make do with visualizing and me describing what I'm doing. So I am holding one of the LED panels and the matrix portal board here, and I need to figure out how I want this stuff to sandwich together. So the matrix portal board is actually designed to plug straight to the input socket on an LED panel. That was the original intent on it. Obviously I can't do that because I'm not using the correct pinout, but even if I could, I wouldn't want to do that because it hangs out over the side of the board by about an inch and a half. And that is going to be back at the that would either be up at the nose or it'd be back in the back. I think it'd be back in the back of the head. I mean, I can control which is which just by defining uh, in the code. So I would have the input of the first one back at the back of the head. So that wouldn't work. It can't stick out over the edge there. So ideally, I would rotate it 180 degrees or even 90 degrees. Rotate it 90 degrees so it's standing vertically actually works really well. And then I have a PCB in the middle that directly connects to the board and the LED panel and directly connects to the matrix portal. That means that it would be out about that far, which is actually rather nice and compact. Let's rotate that back to the original orientation. The first thing I have to do though is send this to the other side of the board. So I need this to be on the opposite, so that connector is facing the LED panel. But the connector for the matrix portal was still on the top. And I, I'm going to do that, I also need to change the footprint. Can I do that from here? I can't, well, let me save in case this crashes. So I need to switch it to a pin socket. And I could potentially, well, I can't easily do what uh, the matrix portal did without jumping through more hoops. So I'll just deal with the fact that a two by eight requires proper positioning. And then is this correct? Well, let's just switch to this. Change. Save. I think this is correct then. Yes, okay, cool. Yeah, okay. So my, my thoughts are that these down here would just be pin headers because the matrix portal has a socket on it. So just put pin headers, pin headers here. And then these would either be pin headers or pin sockets. Uh, I haven't decided which yet. It depends on what I want to solder onto the matrix portal. I did order another one uh, that doesn't have anything soldered to it yet because the one I have has pin sockets on the top. And I don't want to unsolder that. I want to leave this one alone. Okay. So that is correct. Okay, and yeah, so with this on the bottom, pin 1 is where it needs to be. And if this is the orientation where the matrix portal is standing upright, then it does need to be in this orientation on the board. So if I can move, I can move this somehow. Um, I probably want to put it... I probably want to, like, move this over. 
So the matrix portal is offset from that connector, and that connector is the furthest thing back. And how do I draw on the out the edge layer? Here we go. I want to draw a, a rectangle on the edge layer. All right. I keep forgetting that this program is super silly. So, well. Let's just stop and think a little bit more. What grid am I on? I'm on the 2.5, I'm on the 0.1 inch grid. So I need the board to be at least two and a half inches tall to be the height of the matrix portal. However, it can't really be much more than that because then it would interfere with size of the LED panels. It can't really be more than 2.75 inches. So it needs to be at least two and a half, but not more than two and three quarters. I mean, it doesn't have to be at least two and a half. It just makes sense to be that size. And this might not even let me make it smaller because that's the size of the footprint that I have here. So if I move this to the top, I'm on a, I'm on a tenth of an inch grid. So if I do this in such a way there. So if I do this, then I have a tenth of an inch on either side of the matrix portal for clearance. That will fit nicely down the channel behind the LED panel. I think it would actually end up being ever so slightly recessed, because if I actually do put the matrix portal on the way that it's intended to, it kind of runs into the plastic of the LED panel ever so slightly, the plastic frame. So I think I do want to ensure that it stays inside the dimensions of that cavity. Oh, but there's a point where it narrows in on these, and I need to see how much it narrows by in two. There's a little bump right here in the middle. That is 2.49 inches. So, and I'm certainly going to want the board to be longer than, oh, oh, right. Uh, there's a bump on the outside, and then there's the power connector on the inside. So this very quickly becomes a major pain in the ass to figure out what to do. It's certainly easier, nicer, whatever you want to call it. If, if I do this, that saves me like at least half an inch of... Uh, three quarters of an inch of space that I can use inside here. I just have concerns about the through hole. I mean, I could get a, a surface mount connector. I have never done surface mount soldering before, so that would be interesting. At least this is 10th inch pitch, so I could potentially still do it. If I do that, then I have absolutely no concern about the solder, the butt ends of the through holes scraping the bottom of the PCB of the matrix portal. I'm being a dumb. That's not ever going to be a problem because the height of the pins will raise the matrix portal. Like the height of the connector it plugs into. The height of the plastic connector on the matrix portal means it will never get closer than that to a board. So I absolutely, I absolutely can do this and should do this. So if I do that, and just move that all the way over and then take this and then I want to make sure this is centered which it currently is uh, and then how far can it be over 0.35 so I can have it I should be able to do that oops no I'm trying to grab this and then if I move that over That's one, two, three. That should all fit. The question is, is this within tolerance of whatever service I'm using? My concern with this is I've got so many through holes all right next to each other, and I have to be able to route the traces. Because this might require more than two layers if I do that. If I do this, that gives me this entire area I think I might just assume that I can do this for right now. 
Oh, this... Opening the 3D viewer again made it crash. I can't open a window more than once in this program. Oh, there's plenty of room if I do it this way. And then my main, con then my next concern is how far down the board can I go before I run into the power connector? Oh, and I also have an issue where the width of the cavity is not two and a half inches at the end here, which is a slight concern. Oh, no, that's still actually 2.58. As opposed to 2.75. Okay, so if this is still... Okay, that should then fit. Oh, wait, what's this? The size of the matrix portal is two and a half, right? Two and a half, yeah, okay. Oh, but I'm running more than two and a half. I might have to narrow that. Yeah, the matrix portal fits in... Oh, it doesn't quite fit in past that. That would hold it in place, actually. So if I... do this, then I don't have any problems for sure. And I may just do this for the first one and then get fancy with cuts. And then how long can I make it? B. And I get 3.1 inches in the other dimension. And it doesn't tell me. Oh, oh it tells me the width in millimeters. 78 millimeters. 8.7. Is that actually correct? 78.74. Okay, so that's how. God, that's it? That's all the space that I have to play with here, unless I get fancy. Come on. Unless I get fancy with... Um, everything else on here. This is, this is all that I get to play with. Uh, and even then, I can't get that fancy, because... So the, the, the problems I have are right here and right here. There's little protrusions of plastic from the frame, which look like they support the LED board's PCB. And then right here is the power connector for the LED board. So at least I would have to put something like this in here. It'd have to be bigger than that. But I have to have a hole in the middle of the board, which I don't even know if a fab can do, if I'm going to be quite honest. And then over here somewhere is the out connection to the other LED board, which I obviously need to connect to the second one. What I could potentially do is have an extension down here. I don't have to cover the entirety of the board with everything, because like, Mainly all I would have left would be buttons and maybe mount points for the other sensors or the screen or whatever. Maybe it makes sense to like have a, a continuation of like a third height. So something like, like this. But I'm not going to worry about that yet. I think for a first pass of the board, everything that I can fit on here is the goal. And... I'm certainly going to have to make a second revision of the board because there's no way I'm going to get it right the first time. So further thinking, if I have the matrix portal mounted like so in here, then its buttons are right here. So I could use its up and down buttons. They would be visible here. And this should be on here pretty damn well because it'll be uh, attached to the board in per perpendicular directions and it'll be right on top of how the board it's attached to is connected to the LED panel. So I probably can use its up and down buttons for the longer run, have an, a GPIO expander chip, and I could just so solder that directly to this board. I'm getting some breakouts of them from Adafruit this week to prototype with, but those parts are just available and I could uh, as through holes, so I could just slap them on here. In fact, I can just look it up right now. Yeah, so this little breakout board 
Uh, let me add eight more GPIO via I squared C. It's not a great thing to do, but for these buttons it should be sufficient. But this chip. Oh, hey, look at that. Tuh. Right, that's, yeah, that's exactly what I want. So if I go through hole and apply, I can order these. Yeah, so I can order these. Um, it's, you know, cheap enough. I'm not sure what the difference is between the AN, the AN and the N, but that's a worry about it later type thing. I could add one of those somewhere on here and just do that. I would have to either do all the I squared C for the not display components via one of these sets over here or have a way to plug the I squared C connector in, but that that's worry about that later. I think for right now I want to get the board to a point where I can get a board just to get a board to validate that I'm doing it right. And part of that is going to be I need to add buttons. I think this is trying to tell me that I should go to bed. Oh, that's right. I remember now. I have to use select with browser because this window doesn't fuck up. Yeah, that's, that's what I want. Oh, read switch. I would like to have some of those eventually. I also got some stuff to do um, capacitive touch, but that's going to be interesting to see if I can even do. Anyway, push buttons. Uh, I'm just going to put two on here for now. So I have my buttons here, and then I need to go here. Oh, I can't do that yet. I need to go here. And wait for it to load, hopefully, there it goes. I have no idea what any of these look like. So before I do that, I need to go to the footprint editor. That might be what I want. Or one of these. Um, Okay, now third time's a charm. That looks more cur yeah, that looks better. One is menu. Yeah, okay. So I want them ordered like that. Don't know why it's not snapping to the grid. It's doing it in a weird way, but that's basically what I want there. And then if I go view 3D. Okay. 
I definitely won't be able to get a 3D model with this, which is a little bit annoying, but it's fine. Now, is there anything else that I can put on this PCB for right now? I don't think so. I'm going to be doing another mock-up with a permanent proto board with um, basically this connection on it. Uh, it's going to need to be a little bit more awkward to be able to convert the perpendicular pins into something that will work on a proto board, but I do want to mock up a, a better board. I'll be able to put uh, the buttons on it and have it actually work. I'll be able to, I'll probably put places to physically attach all my I squared C stuff, even if I don't actually wire them from that and I continue to use little quick connectors. I just realized it's going to be a pain to edit whatever the hell I have here. I don't know if I even want to bother trying to route any of these traces right now. I guess maybe I should. It is getting late though. So like if I go to the front copper layer here. This is on. I forgot to see that. Uh, hopefully the clock doesn't have to actually be the same length as that. I don't think I'm dealing with a high enough frequency that the trace length matters. What is it doing? Oh my god, stop. Just please, come out here. Don't be stupid. Oh my god. This is so annoying sometimes. Okay, that doesn't look too bad. Can I, like... And that. There we go. I like the look of that. I like the look of that a lot. Might need to swap these button these pins just to think if I come over here and yoink yoink. Because this will be a lot easier to, to trace or to route if I do that. Save update. Update, close, there we go. Much easier to, to trace here. So I just pick this and then just go boom and then pick this and then just go boom, much easier and I can Shove that in there. Shove that there. Bada bing, bada boom. You can even do that. Leave access to those other pins later. I haven't even put any traces on the other side of the board yet. I don't know if I'll be able to continue that because it looks like I have some that cross over here and I can't reorder these these are non reorderable well not easily reorderable without fucking with the code and I don't want to fuck with the code ooh that one is gonna be annoying let's start with the ones in the back okay so these two I think I need to come out this way so the ground can make an actual plane here. I could also potentially rotate this connector. Rotating it might actually help 
rotating this connector might be beneficial for keeping the um, ribbon cable itself out of the way. I'll worry about that later. This is just round one. I'm this is almost certainly not going to be the, la the final PCB. So just fucking do it. Worry about it later. Oh, holy shit. Look at that. Look at that. That's like, I know what I'm doing almost. I can't go this way though. There's no way to go if I go this way. If I go... Oh, it won't let me go through here because of... Oh. What? I can't just be like that. There we go. So it won't let me go through here because this is a pin one, I think. Although I have a moderate concern. Okay. I think it is only because of the square turn one indicator that I can't go through there. Uh, there won't be a ground plane between these. But the entire other side of the board could be a ground plane right now. I just need to remember how to do that. Hmm. Oh. Fill zones. Save. I don't know why it's not filling. Oh, yeah, because it's needing to leave a gap around there, but it's connected all the pins. Silk screen clip by solder mask. Where? I think it's, one of them is this. I have unconnected items. Oh. It thinks that those need to be connected, which I don't think they strictly do, but whatever. Should be fine. Yeah, there we go. Can I add text? Add text. Text. Is that? I don't know if that's right. Not on the correct player. That's why it's not right. Oh, I see what the problem is. Well, anyway, that's it for the night. I'm probably going to look over this again tomorrow or the day after and then try to get a couple of these ordered. 
so I can see if they work and learn from my mistakes to make it better. Anyway, it's midnight. I'm going to bed. Oh my god, I'm going to have like four hours of video to edit. Yeah. Yeah, that was four hours of video to edit. It might have been faster to re-record from scratch once I knew what I was doing. Oh well. Anyway, I made a few tweaks to the board off camera and placed an order from PCBWay. Hashtag not sponsored. They should be here in a few days, and then I'll see how well they work. In the meantime, I'm going to solder up a better prototype board to figure out exactly how I want uh, stuff connected long term, and also experiment with the GPIO expander and capacitive touch sensors I got. Eh. <laughs> if you're enjoying the series, let me know by hitting that like or subscribe button. Thanks for watching.